South Africa was uh, took a a lead back in July last year when they introduced legislation that specifically uh, forced foreign service providers to come and register as VAT vendors in South Africa to add VAT to the amounts that they that that they charge here and to pay that across to the to, to the South African uh, Revenue Service. So, what the digital economy is bringing to uh to the world is the ability to render service, provide value from a distance, remotely. Whereas most historic, at, at least direct tax systems, was based on some physical nexus. If you were to sell goods uh, from Europe to South Africa and you didn't have a presence here, you would unlikely be able to compete on equal footing with your South Af African counterpart that got a, f uh, a shop face, it's got s uh, some, some personality. So there was, there was method in the, uh, and, and logic to the system of not taxing the foreign entity and, and taxing the South African entity. But now, assuming we equalize from an indirect perspective, I as a consumer log on to a website, I want to buy something. Does it really matter to me whether I'm buying from a South African provider or from an overseas provider, I may not even necessarily know. And that's the, that's the difficulty in that, yes, we can equalize on VAT, but if we don't touch on the direct tax aspects, we still sit with a great disparity or potentially great disparity between competitors. Now, when we talk about equalization or competing uh, on, a, on, a, on a fair basis, I think we need to distinguish between competing within South Africa for the same market, so towards the consumers, and then take it one level up to say, what about these South African multinational competing globally against their global counterparts, which is an altogether more complex debate. Now in South Africa, the simple example is a foreign service provider, an iTunes, a, 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 a Google, will, without any physical presence in South Africa, not be liable to South African directors. Not because they have to do any fancy planning, it's just what, what our rules at the moment say. It's a foreign service and the source of that service is not in South Africa. So just by complying, the foreign service provider pays no tax in South Africa, yet the consumer consuming a comparable service, had he bought that same or acquired the same service from a South African based service provider, the South African based service provider would have paid 28% tax. So one can see that the low hanging fruit, the VAT is a must have, but equally, we won't have a package, and I think therein lies the solution. Uh, we won't have a complete package to get neutrality or, or, or equality in the South African space. The challenge, particularly in the e-commerce space, it's an industry with, that, with technologies that move so far that you're having difficulty with legislation keeping up with how to address this. And sophisticated legislation is one thing. Groups can, can still deal with that. But inflexible legislation or outdated legislation is perhaps a bigger concern. And hence, how do you address the, the balance between South Africa protecting its base, so protecting what it has and getting its fair share, versus providing the flexibility and freedom for, to our groups, to South African businesses, to become and remain relevant in this economy that by all accounts has now become the economy, being the, the digital economy. So if you think about if you're providing services digitally, um, you could be providing them from anywhere in the world. You're not necessarily providing them from within South Africa, and in most instances, you're actually not. So that's the reason why these companies then fall outside of the South African tax net, purely on our domestic rules, let alone before we even get to whether or not uh, a tax <coughs> treaty still provides uh, South Africa with taxing rights in that regard. So our rules need to be rewritten in that regard to capture the digital economy. South Africa can make laws uh, as it sees fit to address the base erosion uh, concerns that, 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 that exists, but in isolation, that doesn't get us over the line. <coughs> if you uh, were to um, apply tax treaties, for example, at the, uh, as they are written at the moment, even if South Africa were to introduce these uh, new source rules, there will be many of the foreign multinationals that will nevertheless escape South African tax uh, because of the application of the treaties. So the solution, the complete solution, lies not only in South African legislation, which is a must-have, we must have uh, that in order to enable us uh, as a country to protect the tax base, but also in a collateral or a uh, multilateral 
instrument of some sort whereby uh, the, the harmonization of, of rules globally are addressed also harmoniously in terms of timing so that one jurisdiction doesn't run ahead of another becoming therefore uncompetitive or, or more disadvantageous compared with others.